Now in this next example, expand 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed in Taylor series about point x is equal to negative 1. Hence, evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 in the numerator. We have 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed all over x plus 1 squared with respect to x to the left. Now, for you to expand this in Taylor series, the first thing you'll be told at a point when x is equal to negative 1. And you know they are telling you that is at a point when x is equal to a. So it means when you are expanding a Taylor series at the point when x is equal to a, where there is a, you are going to put the value of a, which is negative 1. Negative 1. Are you seeing that? So it is a Taylor series expansion of a function f of x, isn't it? It is the Taylor series expansion of the function. So if you expand f of x in Taylor series, you start from f of f of a, isn't it? You start from f of a. So if you start from f of a, then you move plus, you leave a space, then f prime of a, then plus, you leave a space, f double prime of a, then plus, you leave a space, f triple prime of a. Maybe those four terms are enough, isn't it? Are we together? So from there, we move again. So if you differentiated f of a for the first time, it means x minus a is raised to power 1 over 1 factorial, isn't it? Are we together? If you differentiate the f of a for the second time, then it means x minus a is raised to power 2 over 2 factorial, isn't it? If you differentiate the f of a for the first time, then it means x minus a is raised to power 3 over 3 factorial. So you've been told here x is equal to negative 1 and we know x is equal to a so that is a clear indication that a is equal to negative negative 1 so it means where there is a you put negative negative 1 are we together so if you put negative 1 where there is a it means we are going to have x minus a to be equal to x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1. So this bracket where we have x minus a is going to be x plus 1, isn't it? And this bracket where we have f of a, if you have f of a, that is going to be f of negative 1, because a is negative 1, isn't it? When you have f prime of a, that is going to be f prime of negative 1, because a is negative 1. So let us start. Let us start. What is f of a? It's the function, isn't it? So, not f of b, I mean f of x is the, the is the function. So the function is 1 minus minus x plus plus x squared minus minus x cubed, isn't it? So if you differentiate it for the first time, what do you have? If you differentiate 1, you get 0. If you differentiate negative x, you get negative 1. If you differentiate x squared, you get plus 2x. If you differentiate x cubed, there you get minus 3x squared. Is that is f prime of x. Yes. Then you go to the next one. If you differentiate it for the second time, see so if you differentiate a constant x, one is zero. If you differentiate two x, you get you get two, isn't it? Then if you differentiate two times negative three, you get negative six. Are we together? Then if you differentiate for the third time f prime triple prime of x, if you differentiate, you get zero. If you get negative six x, you get negative six. So it means, that is the reason why we were reaching the third derivative because I checked the highest power to be 3 meaning when you go to the highest power of 4 you get 0 so on 1 half of the end mm -hmm. So you see those terms are really necessary yeah. Are we together? Yeah, because the highest power of that polynomial was 3, isn't it? Meaning past the third derivative will be 0 so half of the end So from here, we don't need this, what do we need? We need F f prime of f of a, f prime of a, f double prime of a, and f triple prime of a, isn't it? So, what is f prime of a? Where there is a, your a is negative? Negative 1. So it means we are looking for f of negative 1. Are we together? Because x is equal to a, meaning where there is x you put a, then after putting a where there is x, then where there is a you put negative 1. So we just substitute direct, meaning a is in the middle. It is like saying x is equal to a is equal to negative 1, isn't it? So it means where there is x you put negative 1. So we start, what is f of negative 1? Where there is x put negative 1. Go, so 1 minus negative 1 is 1 plus 1, isn't it? 
Negative 1 squared is just positive 1, isn't it? Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, isn't it? So what do you get there? This is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So you get four. Use calculator. Just say, is it really 4? Just say negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Then you say 1 minus answer plus answer squared minus answer cubed. What do you get? What have you found? See this form? Yeah, see this form. Are we together? You use a calculator. Then you move what is f prime of negative 1. Negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So you have negative 1 plus 2 answer minus 3 answer squared. Where does x you put negative 1? You are going to get negative 6. What do you have from the calculator? It's what I want. Negative 6. I want the value of the calculator. Then, f double prime of negative 1, where there is x, you put negative 1, so you're going to have 2 minus 6 into negative 1. What, do you, what does the calculator give you? Use calculator. It is 2, if you're negative 1, it's answer is 2 minus 6 answer. You have positive 8. Then, f triple prime of negative 1, it is just that constant, negative 6, isn't it? Are we together? Because here means x is raised to power 0, so it's like negative 1 raised to power 0, which is just 1, isn't it? Everything raised to power 0 is 1, you remain with that your constant the way it is. So, let us now start substituting everything. Let us start substituting everything. I start here. What is f of x? Start from there. What is f of x? 1 it is the function, isn't it? 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed to be equal to f of a. What is f of a? Remember your a is negative 1. Meaning f of a is f of? f of negative 1, which is? Which is 4. Are we together? a is negative 1, okay? So you move x minus a. If a is negative 1, it means x minus a is x minus negative 1. That is x plus 1, isn't it? Then it means f of a is f of negative 1 because a is equal to negative 1, isn't it? Then it means f prime of a is f prime of negative 1, isn't it? f double prime of a is f double prime of negative negative 1. f triple prime of a is f triple prime of negative of negative 1, isn't it? Because a is negative 1 and x is equal to a is equal to negative 1, isn't it? Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. So start. f of a is f of negative 1 and f of negative 1 is what? Is 4. Then it is plus f prime of a is f prime of a, which is negative 6, isn't it? Yeah. So this is negative 6 divided by 1 factorial is just negative 6 into x plus 1 because x minus a is x plus 1, isn't it? Yeah. Are we together? Then we are done with this term, we are done with this term, we are here. f double prime of a is f double prime of negative 1, which is 8, isn't it? 8 divided by 2 factorial is 4. So we have plus 4, then your x minus a is x plus 1 squared, isn't it? Are we together? Good. Then move again. f triple prime of a is negative 6. So negative 6 divided by 3 factorial, negative 1, isn't it? So here we have negative 1 times x minus a is the same as x plus 1 cube. Are we together? Cube. So you see, we found the expansion of this function in ascending powers of x plus 1. Are you seeing that? In ascending powers of x plus 1. Because if you have x equals negative 1, bringing negative 1 this side, you have x plus 1. So it is a Taylor series expansion in ascending powers of x plus plus 1. So after that, you come back and you substitute, isn't it? So let us now utilize this space here. Substitute. What do we have? What have we been given here? We begin with 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed over what? Over x plus 1 squared, isn't it? This one is equal to what? Where there is this function, you substitute with this value, isn't it? Are you seeing that? It is equal to 4 minus 
6 into x plus 1 plus 4 into x plus 1 squared minus x plus 1 cubed. Then everything is over the denominator, which is x plus 1 squared. So this function in the numerator, you found its expansion in the Taylor series, isn't it? Are you together? You found this expansion in the Taylor series to be this, and you substituted this. So the next thing we do is to simplify, isn't it? The next thing we do is to simplify. So start simplifying. On this side of the equation, it is just the way it is. It is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed over x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared to be equal to, so start with this first one. 4 divided by x plus 1 squared, you get 4 over 4 over x plus 1 squared, isn't it? Then the second one, it is minus 6. x plus 1 cancels with 1 x plus 1, isn't it? So you remain with 6 over x plus over x plus 1. Then you move here, plus 4 x plus 1 squared divided by x plus 1 squared, you remain with you remain with 4, isn't it? Then, minus x plus 1 cubed divided by x plus 1 squared, you remain with x plus 1 in the numerator, isn't it? So it is plus x plus 1. Are we together? So if you look at that, you can now see what can be placed together and what can be differentiated on its own, isn't it? So what do we do? We want to integrate, you introduce the integral on both sides of the equation. We are integrating everything. We are integrating everything. We are integrating everything with respect to what? With respect to? We are integrating everything with respect to? To x, isn't it? Then we put our limits, we've been given in 0 to? 0 to? 0 to? 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Meaning evaluating this integral is evaluating that integral, isn't it? So you start with the first one. If you differentiate this, what do you have? You just look and see the answer there. Very simple, isn't it? You let x plus 1 to be u. Look at how to evaluate that integral here. I talked about, you can see, the x power in the numerator is 1 that you can let it be a algebraic substitution. So if you have 4 dx over x plus 1 squared, you take this 4 outside, it's a constant, isn't it? So if you let u to be x plus 1, meaning if you differentiate u with respect to x, you get 1 here. Differentiating x is 1, differentiating 1 is 0, isn't it? Yes. So you take the x the other side, then you end up with the du is equal to the x, isn't it? So if you substitute this back here, you have 4 dx, well this dx you put du over x plus 1 is over u squared. Are you seeing? Are you seeing that? So it means here we have 4, a integral of u raised to negative 2d, because u squared, if it is to bring the numerator, it is u raised to negative 2, isn't it? Yes. Are we together? So if you integrate this, what do you now have? You have 4, this is a polynomial, so it is u raised to negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1. So that's how to do a polynomial. Are we together? Are we together? Good. So we have 4, negative 2 plus 1 is? Negative 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, isn't it? So you say 4 divided by negative 1 is negative? Negative 4. U raised to negative 1, it means it is over U, isn't it? Are we together? And what was U? U was x plus 1. Meaning if you integrate this term, you end up with negative 4 over x plus 1. Very simple, isn't it? Algebraic substitution. Very, very easy. Then you go to the next one. If you differentiate that, that one you don't even need to do, just do. It is negative 6 ln of x plus 1. You just look and see. When you are integrating 6 dx over x plus 1, as usual, you factorize 6 outside, isn't it? If you let u to be x plus 1, it is algebraic substitution to be checked first before you go to partial fraction and anything else. And the ones which result into inverse fraction, isn't it? You must check algebra it. The algebraic substitution. So there it means when you let u to be x plus 1, differentiating u with respect to x, you get the u is equal to? Isn't it? So if you substitute here, we have 6 outside. Well, there is dx, you put the u, then over x plus 1 is u. So what is the integral of d over u? See, that is ln of u. And what was your u? 
So it is 6 ln of x plus, and that is exactly what we are there. Meaning, these are standard integrals. Standard integrals are to be used, not to be done. That's why you see we're just putting the answer direct. They are to be used, isn't it? They are not part of the methodology here. They are to be used like I'm using them in the rough work, isn't it? Good. Then after that, you move to the next one. If you integrate 4 ds, see 4 is a constant, you factor it out. So this does remain with the ds when you integrate, you get x. See So it means there we have plus 4, plus 4x. Four if you integrate 4, you get 4x, isn't it? Then minus, if you integrate x, you get x squared over 2. If you integrate 1, see again you get your 1x, which is just x, isn't it? Yeah, if you integrate 4, you get your 4x. Yeah, if you integrate 1, you get your 1x, which is just x, isn't it? Plus, plus x. So after that, after everything, you come with your integral from 0 to 0 to 1, isn't it? So start substituting when you substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. So start where the x if you put 1, what do you get? When you put 1, where there is x, it is very simple. I can see that is negative 4, 0. The answer is a half. What do you have? I'm seeing a half. When you put 1, it is very simple. No, it is not a half. This is a ln of 2. It's not a half. That is a ln of 2. It is a, it is, it is, it is, it is, yeah, that is a ln of 2. It cannot be a half. When you put 0, negative 4. When you put 0, you will get negative 4. When you put 1, what do you get? When you put 0, you will find negative 4. Just press the formula. 1 is equal to 1, then you go to the calculator. Negative 4 of answer plus 1. Minus 6 ln of answer plus 1 plus 4 answer minus answer squared over 2 plus answer. What do you get? It's supposed to be something point decimals because of ln of 2. It can be a, it, 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 it can be it can also be a very big negative number. Yeah, because of this 6 is power of ln. Power of ln of 2. That's a big negative number. What do you get? Oh, negative 1 point. 6, 5, 8, 9. Then, when you put 0, what do you get to the lower limit? Negative 4, isn't it? Good. So, what do you get here next? So, negative 6.589 minus negative 4. Meaning it is plus 4, isn't it? You get to negative 2 point. 6.59, that is what it is. Yeah. Very good. So negative 1.659 minus negative 4, you get positive. 2.3? 4, 1. 4, 1, 1. And you dealt with that problem thoroughly. That is how to deal with such kind of problems.